with Nigeria's 18.3 million children out of school figure, not showing signs of dropping rapidly. An international charity has initiated fresh moves to tackle the crisis decisively. The Bironke Adiagbo Foundation, IAF, based in the United Kingdom, has thrown its art into the ring to rescue education in Nigeria. IA Foundation has been a key player in the effort to tackle the worrisome out of school crisis in Nigeria, where UNICEF and UNESCO have read out high figures of out of school children from year to year. Adiago says she has resolved to tackle the problem of out of school children by supporting the renewed hope agenda of the federal government. She joins us now in the studio. Good morning. And thank you very much uh, for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for well, having me. Good great morning. idea. We used to hear 10.3 million children out of school. Mm. Now, 2024, they say it's 18.4 million children out of school. Let's talk to solutions. How do we address this challenge? You as an education expert, where is the problem? Where is the solution? Okay. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. So, um, for starters, I'm a chartered accountant uh, and I'm based in the UK. Uh, I work in the education sector in the UK and we have zero tolerance for out of school children. So, when I come to my fatherland and I see millions of children roaming the street, it became a moral challenge for me that I've got to tackle this. I'm there trying to make sure the British children are getting education. So, therefore, I should do the same thing in my country, Nigeria. So I started researching about this, and I realized the number was honestly unbelievable. And we see them on the streets, you know, you see them walking. I mean, yesterday when I was going home, I saw a five-year-old little girl cleaning my windscreen and begging me, saying I want money to eat, and her mother was just saying, across the road. So the mother is sent her out there to um, beg for money. So poverty is part of the problem, right? Now, they're not sending their children to school. It's going to perpetuate poverty because then their own children have no skills. They then, so that poverty cycle keeps going. So we need to break it. So what we are doing as a foundation, we are saying that child should not be on the street. That child should be in the classroom. You are saying you are poor, you can't send the child to school. Don't worry. We will pay for that child to go to school. We'll buy the child's books, uh, shoes, anything the child needs. Just release that child to go get education. So our volunteers go all over the streets, all over the country in Nigeria. When children are out of school during school time, they go pick them up, take them to their parents and say, this is not right, we will let them go to school. Yeah. And guess what? The parents are struggling with us, thinking, no, you can't take my child off me, because if that child doesn't go on the street to walk, we will have nothing to eat tonight. So you find us struggling with the parents. So parents and guardians are part of the problem. There must be strong legislation to make sure any parent that doesn't send their kids to school, they get penalized. That's what we do in the UK. If you don't send your child to school, they throw you in prison. Yep. Full stop. Yep. You understand? The political will needs to be there. Yep. I mean, I must admit, this administration, I can see some political will, because now we have the Alma Jerry and Out of School Children Commission. Uh, it was on our program yesterday, and we are engaging with them. Fantastic. So we have someone to deal with. Now, previously, it was like a black hole. We don't know who to talk to, to deal with. So there's a political will there. We just need to turn up the volume. We need more legislation and we need more foundations like my foundation to work with the government to make sure we can pick up these kids. The other thing is the funding. We have 135 billion sitting in Ubek because the state governments are not providing their own counterpart funding. Someone needs to call those governors together in their forum and tell them Contribute your own counterpart funding so you better can release that money and we could put the necessary funding into education. Brilliant. Thank you so much. That's fantastic and um, great work with your foundation. Definitely um, needed at this time. I was going to, I, I love how you talked about your engagement with the government because there's only as much as you can do as a foundation. At the end of the day, education is the responsibility and preserve of the government. What you're doing is supportive um, action and supportive work. So in terms of engaging, let's even leave the federal, because I like, you've talked about the governors and that there's counterpart funding. You know, you, uh, there's funding in UBEC, but they need to provide counterpart funding. What have you identified as the challenges for some of the governors who have just refused to take education seriously, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, because when we look at the numbers of the out-of-school children, the highest numbers are in the north. 
What are some of the challenges that you've encountered with these governors and what are some of the things that your foundation would hope to do to work with them in order to make your, your project a success? Again, it's again about the political will at the state level. Yeah. Um, because governors have got conflicting priorities and they are thinking, you know what, we don't necessarily have to provide this counterpart funding. Maybe Uber can release the money they've got. Yeah. and we don't feel oblig obligated to provide our money. Yeah. Ubek is telling them that if you don't provide your counterpoint for we'll be all back to our money. So there's this banter going on between them. The question here, in my opinion, is that the leverage we can use on the governors is to make sure when they go get their money from Abuja every month, they deduct the counterpart funding, which they are meant to give to Ubek, from the money and pass that to Ubek, and then we, don't have, we won't have this issue. So mm -hmm. the governors have no control over it. But once you've given them the money, to get it from them becomes a problem. So, so deduct be, from source? Absolutely. Mm. That's the only way around it. Otherwise, they won't provide their own cut of funding. You know, Nigerian governors, I think we carry placard, they will scatter everything because they go to court. That's it. But apart from this, one other thing I'd like to ask you is how are your volunteers doing the work of spotting these kids? That's number one. Number two, what are the liaison like with the school? Are they government schools? What are the liaison as regards paying the tuition fees? That's another part of it. And like you said, what are the liaisons with the PTAs of some of those schools? Do those government schools even have PTAs, the Parent Teacher Association? Okay, very good question. So um, to spot these kids is not difficult. We just make sure it's during school hours. We don't have a problem with the child okay. Let it happen after school. But at this time of the day, no child should be on the street okay. So we make sure our volunteers go out at this at school time. So they pick up the kids, they go to the parents and have this conversation with the parents. It's usually a long banter, but sometimes we, we're successful in getting our way. When we enroll the children in government school, by the way, so that we can spread the fund thinly because we don't put them in private school, which is too expensive yeah. anyway. You wouldn't believe it. Even in government, the so-called government school, there are still fees that have been paid. Really? There are books to be bought. Absolutely. There are books to be bought. There is um, so many additional fees which comes along. Why parents are saying, even though well, government school, free education. I'm telling you, it's not free. Take it from me because we do the paying, hmm. right? We make, but we make sure. How, how much do you pay averagely for a child in primary school, for instance, in government school? It's about yeah. 27,000 pounds. Okay. Naira. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. Naira. So, okay. And there are other ancillary things. There's books, especially in first term. Our budget is like that in first term because they have to buy books. Mm. And those books, it's not, it's not being reused. Because I keep asking them, why do we always have to buy new books every first term? You understand? Mm. You can always reuse that books, but for some strange reasons, you can't do that. But what we make sure, because we're very accountable in our foundation, we need an invoice for every child we're going to pay their fees. No invoice, no school fees. That, again, was another banter. They found it odd that we're asking them for an invoice. And I'm saying, we need the paperwork to release the money. <laughs> you understand? So we had that issue with the school. And we have to make sure, even in their invoice, make sure all the So government schools don't want to release the invoice? No, some of them don't even have bank. Some schools don't have bank account. They will tell you they don't have bank account. Government schools don't have bank account. I'm telling you for a fact. I'm telling you for Even in the rural areas, you know, they, they don't have documentation. And I, I require certain things to be on that invoice before we can pay. We argue, 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 and we saw that we saw that bit. Out. There's a safeguarding issue as well, because what's happened a couple of times? We've got these kids into the school. The parents have come from nowhere, took, took the kids out of school again, put them back on the street to go and walk. Some will even take them and run away to the north or somewhere. You understand? So then there's a safeguarding issue. We are holding the school accounts that we put that child in the school, not the parents. The parents have no right to come and take that child from school. You need to revert to us to say. Look, it's IE Foundation that put this child in school. You need to go back to IE Foundation. But they will just take the child and run away. Okay, madam. Just by way of summary, you, you mentioned punishment. Yes. You said as we do in England. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the enabling law in Nigeria, the UBEC Act, yeah. the Universal Basic Free Universal Education, whatever, mm -hmm. Section 2 sub 2 says that if you don't send your child to school, you can be sanctioned up to the age of nine years if you don't send your child to school. But the penalty is 2,000 naira for first offender. The, uh, for repeat offense, it is uh, 5,000 uh, naira. But we have the law. Mm -hmm. But even that law that is there, nobody is enforcing it. What do you think the problem is? So Maybe if people have to pay 2,000 naira, pay 5,000 naira, 
Maybe they will be forced to send their so children to school. So that's a question for the law enforcement agency. They need to find a mechanism for enforcing the law. We can see these kids on the streets now. We are not blind. So why can't the law enforcement say, take me to your parents? Why aren't you in school? Therefore, I have to penalize your parents. Nobody is doing that. I know it's checking. We've got a Ministry of Education. We've now got the Commission for Alma Jerry. They should take that seriously to make sure they work with the law enforcement agency to make sure they implement that. However, I'm going to put a caveat there. It's easier to say that in the UK, if you don't send your child to school, we'll put you in prison because there's a safety net. Yeah, they give people benefit if they are poor. You understand? We are trying to introduce that in Nigeria, but we haven't done it properly yet. Mm. So a parent will tell you, I have no food to give that child if that child doesn't go on the street. What can you say as a government? You can't say anything because you haven't put the safety net in place. Mm. You understand? Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Biron Kadiago. In the UK now, Labour is going to introduce free meal. Once your child comes to school, it's you eat there. free food. Is there already? Uh, maybe we should now. start giving free food they in Nigeria. They do now. They're tr introducing it in Nigeria now to be fair uh, well. to the government. Ah! Yeah. Don't let's go there. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us.